This is code.org, and we're going to custom orders. Cool. All right. Uh, I see code here. Does it do stuff? Now, I already completed A, so mine might look a bit different because we're being fancy and doing all of them. It does do stuff. That still runs. Okay. That's fine. Uh, a lot of this is from A. The customer class represents a yep customer of the Project Mercury food truck. It has an instant variable called customer desserts. Yes, it does right there, which is a instantiation of our dessert class. It's an object. Uh, in the customer.java, write a method, enter orders, in the customer class. Yep. To use the scanner class to enter quantities of dessert. I'm going to point out again, guys, input, great example right here, right? Make sure you use the resources that code.org provides. If I go over here to close, we have a uh, example of modifying clothing. That being said, let's go back. Okay, so customer class, scanner class to enter quantities of dessert. All right, so, oh, there it is, enter order quantity. And... So first I'm going to do scanner equal uh, input, right? I'm instantiating an object of the scanner class, new scanner. And we know, because we've seen it a bunch, and you can look at the example they gave us in two, system.in is what we'll be using. What that argument is, guys, it tells the computer we're going to be storing it. You could think of it as live. You could also put a file name there if you wanted to store it in a file. We're not doing that, but this could be different. Uh, to use the scanner class to enter quantities of dessert. If the total quantity of desserts requested is greater than or equal to 24, set the price of customer dessert to the current price times times. Okay, calculate the quantity of desserts requested and the total price. Oh, and they give a pseudocode because they're kind. Well, if it's helpful, then if not, they're not kind. Oh, all right. So while quantity... Okay, so I have scanner, and then obviously we're going to need a quantity variable, and it looks like that's going to be an integer. So quantity, yes, I'll set it to zero. Hmm, they say total quantity, we'll see if we need it, but sure. And they ask us to set that to zero. Cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a while loop, while quantity greater than or equal to zero. Watch out. Okay, so did I match this? Yes. So as long as that's greater than is equal to zero, add quantity to the total quantity. Prompt the user for quantity. Okay, so if it's, we can go ahead and add it right at the top here equals and what is this going to equal total quantity right it's going to equal the old value plus the new value this now if you want to be fancy it is shorthand in programming to do this and that just means keep the old value of quantity but also add to it i like the readability of this for students so total quantity is going to be equal to whatever it used to be equal to plus the new value entered both of those that i showed though would be correct now prompt the user for a quantity or a negative one. Okay, system.out.print. I'm not gonna use ln because I want them to be able to respond on the same line. If you use ln, it forces when they enter text to be on the next line because for ln, print ln is print, next, uh, print line. So enter a quantity or negative one to quit. Bam, semicolon. And now what are we gonna do? We need quantity to be equal to input.next, and we know it's an int, so I'll go ahead and say next int. And now there's conditionals, right? If it is this, calculate the total. Interesting that we would change that live, but okay. Ca uh, set the price of custom dessert, so if is greater than or equal to 24. So if they're ordering a lot, yum. Oh, we're going to charge them more, not less. Or wait. Oh, no, we're charging them a lot less. They only have to pay a fourth of the price. Wow, that's a big discount. Okay, so if it's greater than or equal to 24, we can do this a few ways. I'm going to do, though, <laughs> deciding double new price 
is going to be equal to I want this very readable guys for you so let's do dot current price is going to be equal to uh whatever oh uh, yeah custom dessert right yep that's the so we're going to use that is going to be equal to custom dessert dot get price and that's going to return the value or whatever the current price is now i'm going to do double and this is an overkill but i want this a readable new price is going to be equal to current price times 0 0.25 right and so that would be the updated price now though we'll have to set that price so set the price okay customer dessert dot set price and this is where we finally can pass the value new price all right, now I want to show you something uh, somewhat fancy, real fancy way to do this. All of this, I like the readability of this. I will leave mine like this, but on it, this, if I do get price right here and do times 0 0.25, I could eliminate all of these lines. That's the same thing. I like how readable this is. Code, I like to be readable, especially when learning. So new price. Calculate the total price of the custom dessert total quantity. Print the total price. Okay. So that's going to be a double. Double total price, I guess. We could just say total. Total, total price, whatever you want. Total. Ah, uh, since we have total quantity, I'll do total price. Follow the naming conventions. Total price is going to be equal to total quantity times... Um, customer dot is dessert. So total quantity would be equal to custom dessert dot get price. Or I could also again have another I don't know double my price. If we, you want this to be, if you think it's more clean to do it this way, something like that. But I'll leave it as I had. So that's good. Uh, that will be the total price. Now I need the total. Calculate the total price. Yep. Total quantity. Print the total quantity. And I did LN, so this will print on a new line. I could say, like, total quantity is, or, I mean, up to you to choose how you write that. Maybe you want to capitalize it. Boom. So that would be total quantity. And now... And now we have to close scanner. Now we don't have a scanner, right? Object. Well, we do have a scanner object, but we don't have anything named scanner. We named our uh, scanner object input. So, and that has parentheses after it. It is a method and that prevents data leak, but we don't need to know all that. <laughs> all right. Now we get to run it. I hope. Yes. Calculate the total quantity of desserts. My counsel. Ooh, modified dessert. Yay! Now, let's hit run and see what we need to debug. Okay. I'm going to... I don't want to do that. That's my previous uh, code, so I'm going to go to one to skip over that. Interesting. Why would that not... Oh, this is set to... Ah, got it. So now I'm going to change this over. This was the previous code. So I'm actually going to just do this and copy this. I'm going to undo that though. Bam. So that's my new thing I just added. This was from A. I'm going to leave it like this. Okay. So quantity or um, let's do, I don't know, 25. Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> Total quantity is zero. So that's not what we want. Perfect. What did I break? Wonder what's going on there. Let's do a. This is how I debug. See if I'm ever getting this set. That set right there. Okay. If it's greater than or equal to, do I get a price out of that? Okay, I'm gonna copy this, paste this. Except I want to know what the current price is.
Ah, so I'm going to make an adjustment because this quantity never gets set. And then I'm going to show you another way to do this. I'm going to cut this guy and I'm going to place this down here to actually set the total quantity because and this way I was doing it at the top. Clear that. There we go. So five and then times the price. Now, let if I set it to 35. So that'd be 40 total. The price is now 65 because the price should be 0.25 what it previously was. And what it previously was 6.5, which times, yep, that is correct. So cool. We got it going. Now, another way to do this, let's make sure it quite works. Yes. Oh, negative one. It shouldn't calculate that if negative one is entered, right? We would want it to quit. Negative one to quit. And put if total is. And then I would say if here to avoid that. Quantity is greater than negative one. And that way that will avoid the situation. Now, guys, there's more ways to this the one to do this like there is in everything in programming five so boom boom let me get rid of my debug statements but i'll do that in a sec uh six b six yes this looks good negative one oh the price isn't being printed here price is being printed by the code right there Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so I don't need that. Now, guys, like programming, there's more than one way to do this and do this correctly. Maybe you don't want it to print every time. It looks like they're repetitively asking. And that's another method of approaching this. If we want it to look exactly like this, we could do this. We could end our wall loop there. I could eliminate it here. And then I can perform the calculations. And now negative one. And then the only calculation is performed at the end. I should get rid of my debug statements. Bam. Two ways. Now it looks exactly like theirs. Both performed the functionality they requested. Pretty cool, though. Onward.